everybody. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast. We're coming to you live from the XTC on GSP. We have a Team USA match versus Team Spain. Uh, today, I'm joined by my good friend, Kenneth Lyon, and member of Team USA. Hello there. All right, Kenneth, I'm about to open up the Choose Your Champion bets, and I want you to go ahead and break down those lists. But before we do that, I want to remind you that this upcoming weekend is the Lamu Galactic Championship Qualifier. If you haven't gotten your ticket, tickets are still available. You can buy your ticket up to one hour before the player meeting starts. So it's still not too late. Let's get as many people in there as possible. And it is a hyperspace event. Get your qualifying. Uh, try to get your qualifier in 30. You got to be in the top 32 in order to make that galactic championship qualifier uh, towards the end of the year. So keep your chance now. And of course, if you're interested in the planet target locks, some of those are still available as well. All right, Kenneth, go ahead and break down those lists. It's time to choose your champion. All right. Uh, starting with Mr. Comeback himself, Carson Ray, we have Poe Dameron uh, with the S foils, Heroic, and R4 Astromech. No overdrive thruster, just your standard Poe. Uh, Rose Tico with C-3PO. Jess Pava with BB Astromech and the S-Foils. And Lulo Lampar with Lone Wolf. Um, I, I would say nothing too surprising, but I've been looking at this list for like three weeks now, so... That, I guess I'm just used to it. Mm -hmm. On the other side, for... Um, Spanish player whose name escapes my mind. Jose uh, Jose Hungaro. Oh. Uh, Jose has a modification of the Heratani list with no Hera in it. He has Garvin Drace in the Arc 170 with a hole upgrade. Kyle Katarn with Moldy Crow and Jin Erso. Benthic Two Tubes with the Pivot Wing Config, Perceptive Copilot, Leia Crew, and a hole upgrade. And Shara Bay with Vectored Thrusters, or Vectored Cannons. All right. So looking at uh, looking at this squad here, you know, you had mentioned it's Haratani without the Hera. What what does Jose know that we don't, or what is it that he's leaning into um, to to basically say I don't need Hera to win games? Um, Shara gives him a three die gun, or at least another one, for reasonably cheap. That would be my best guess, mm -hmm. like because Shara, like I've been playing. Um, Jan and four A wings, and Shara is some of the best offense for like the, the cost. Just as long as you have ways to make sure she has a focus token, she can just take a target lock, use her ability to get a CLT effect, and just punch fairly consistently. Hera provides very consistent defense and just always having access to mods, and the Garvin focus ping pong is great, but. I guess he's leaning also into the just the chonk inherent to the Arc 170 versus the X-Wing on Garvin. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think Hera's better, but... Yeah, but the, I mean, the, the, those big swings from Shara Bay definitely can do... I mean, in, in, at range one, you got two dice, plus the range bonus, plus a potential added focus with the ability. I mean, you can yeah. end up slapping four hits on somebody. So maybe, maybe in his testing... You know, the higher agility ships maybe was, was giving some issues or high health ships. So having having a little bit more punch in the yeah. list uh, might might have been the answer. Yeah, and there's also Shara here threatening Lulo because I don't think Lulo can get out of this Shara shot when she has target lock focus. Mm -hmm. And if he stresses himself to shoot at Shara, then it's going to be, you know, like a CLT shot into two agility. Well, it looks like we are taking a target lock. And right there, you can see the distance of the target lock. The question is, would boosting to the left most... I think boosting to the left would get you out of range. So it takes the takes target okay. lock. You were able to see the distance. Where did that range 3 bubble reach past that ship? Which, for anybody playing in person... I mean, you can see that same information with a range ruler, right? You put it next to your ship, you reach out, and that gives you some information on distances in front of you as well. So we'll see if that forward boost ends up being enough. Here come the X-Wings. We're going to step on the gas, it looks a little bit. Who's that dressed in the black one? That's Jess, right? Excuse me, that's Poe, right? That's Poe, yeah. 
All right, we'll go ahead and mark Poe as, uh, let's see, kind of come black, I guess. <laughs> we'll do that. Ooh, just got out there. There it is. The boost was enough. You know, now Shara is hot on Lulo's tail. Although she is getting a little far away from the support ships of mm -hmm. Kyle and Benthic. And additionally, you know, we were talking about the the consistency that Hera can end up bringing with being able to pass tokens to anybody. One of the things we were talking about the podcast on Monday, during the podcast on Monday, is you know you have Benthic who can give away focus tokens. You got Kyle who can do the same thing. Maybe that's enough. Maybe there is there a uh, what's the, what's the word here. Is there a certain point where the the return on investment isn't worth it and maybe that extra offense ends up actually being a value over the abundance of tokens? I would I would ask, you know, anybody who's maybe played the Heratani list a lot, how often do you end up with extra tokens? And maybe that might be the idea where Jose was going when uh, when building his list. I mean, while you may have extra tokens, that just means you never ran out of mods. And with Jin Urso and, like, you know, the focus ping pong from Garvin, it makes that X-Wing extraordinarily tanky. It makes Hera, like... With Jin Urso in the list, that's a two-point Hera's focus token, or her double focus can be focuses or evades to whoever she passes. And she will essentially always have actions for people, even if they didn't get them or they took target locks. Now they have green tokens. Now, once the engagement phase starts, whatever tokens a ship has, they have. And it's not like, while I only have my one focus, I can get evades from Hera, or I can get extra focuses from Hera if I need them. It's just, okay, I have one focus, that's all I get. All right, and there's Benthic taking those focuses, turning one focus. into an evade. And not using his ability to give Garvin the focus. Yeah, I noticed at first he had reached one, the focus out to Shara, and then didn't. Uh, I think he reached it out to Kyle and gave Kyle the turn one Moldy Crow to focus. Got it. All right. So still lined up with, with Benthic. It looks like he's relying on that formation. Ooh. Okay, takes the hard the hard turn. Gonna try to find Jess and Rose. Jess and Rose at that little kind of jousting block you got there. And he keeps Shara close to the support ships. Now I'm not sure. Actually, never mind. That doesn't apply to today. So let me not even bring it up. Never mind. <laughs> So for anybody wondering, oh, I guess I guess now I got I got to bring it up. I said it. Um, so on the the rules forum, there was a a um, there was a question that was answered about how about the way color assignments for actions work in X Wing. It's and the BB-8 thing. The B B thing, yeah. It, it has opened up some very interesting implications for the future and how we uh, how we read cards. I'm really curious to see what ends up happening there. It but, also broke overdrive thrusters. Not that, in the sense that it made it too powerful. It just doesn't work right anymore. Right, yeah. It's, it's very strange. So if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, they basically have said on BB-8, it refers to a blue uh, blue maneuver and that you can execute a... Um, it's BB-8 pilot, specifically. It says, during the system phase, you may perform a red barrel roll or boost action. Right, there it you go. It does not say red barrel roll or red boost. Therefore, mm -hmm. it was ruled the boost was a white action. There it is. So, the wording on overdrive thrusters is red boost, comma, barrel roll, comma, or slam action. Which means it is red boost, white barrel roll, or white slam. Must use the template of a speed hire. Yep. 
so the the uh, the the question then became, you know, what how does how does how does it end up functioning for can you just do a single barrel roll that's a two for free and then boost with a two as well right like that's it it, yeah. it it's opened up some interesting questions we're gonna have to get some clarifications for this weekend especially going into lamu uh from d but uh you know th those of you wanting to do some shenanigans with poe you might uh might have that available for you now and if you want to use the bb8 ruling with bb8 you can use poe and bb8 astromech to do two barrel roll two super boost then move there it is look in my decloak but you can only do it twice so i mean True. that's that could be enough though <laughs> yeah i'm supernatural now um I do like the the hard turn that Jose made the turn before. Uh, we were worried yeah. about about Shara being a little bit overextended. All right, we're, we're worried about that that overextension a little bit brings her back in, staying close to the formation, making sure that you can be there. And I think also, you know, Jose may have just been kind of uh, it. It was a threat saying, "Hey, listen, you, yeah. you're you're in my hood right now." You you gonna stay here? Or you gonna leave? All right. Looks like looks well, like. Well, there's also where Shara is at now. She has like four different approach angles to attack any of those ships with the system phase boost. Yep. Because she can boost right, go at Poe. Boost left, go at either Lulo or the left side of Jess and Rose. Or she can boost straight to get out of the formation's way, and then just hit that gap in the gas clouds. Or not? I'll boost straight, boost right, and then turn in. Because if she stays where she's at, she's probably going to get, you know, she was going to get in the way of the U-Wing turning in. All right. And it looks like the chat has caught up. Remember, we are on a 90-second delay uh, due to XCC rules uh, about our our question about BB-8. Uh, I.O. bumping. Uh, Chris Allen says that must, that just... They just made a mistake. There's no. Did they correct it? D is it corrected? Is my is my question. <laughs> if it's corrected, Chris, then please let me know because that would be excellent. Yeah, people people were posting uh, posting things, uh, pictures and stuff about it. I hadn't visited it myself. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, the only cards it affects are BB-8 Pilot and um, Overdrive Thruster. Mm -hmm. But, like, the the way it, again, breaks Overdrive Thruster in the sense that it stops working properly is clearly not intended. At least that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think what was pointed to as a as a point of uh, evidence was the wording on sensitive controls, because sensitive and controls, and yeah, it, it does very specifically say red boost and red barrel roll. So, it again, I'm not sure what's going to end up being the final determination if if we're just going to end up getting an errata. For the current things that we like in our minds, when we see red boost or barrel roll, we know what well red applies to both of these things. It's a it's a descriptor yeah. of 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 both of those. Um, but if they're gonna go and, and get that specific, then they would need to errata and say you know the word red is before this as well if they want to go that way. Yeah. I would expect either the ruling to change or an errata to happen, because mm -hmm. uh, yep. like it strikes me that that is clearly unintended. Although, naturally, BB-8 pilot tearing up the meta, I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. So reports are that it it is likely to be corrected, which is great. So we'll we'll keep it. We keep it under wraps, I guess, and see see what happens. I just need to get a clarification in the next few days because we have yeah. an event coming up. Yeah. 
And to commentate on this turn, we had two bumps from the Rebel Squad in Kyle and Garvin. Granted, Kyle has a bunch of focus tokens and can give Garvin one. And they're probably not in the fight. But, ooh, that's not where Poe wants to be. Shara, looking at you. Range two. Boosting. Now, Poe in this corner here can end up being uh, turned on pretty easily. Benthic, Garvin, and Kyle, even though they're all in a little conga line right now, do have the ability to find that bottom right-hand corner pretty easily. Yeah. There's also, um, what should I call it, that if they turn it on Poe, they have to worry about you know Jess and Lulo coming in and, I guess, Rose. Because if they turn in too hard at Poe, they just expose their flank to the rest of the list, the resistance list. It is obstructed into Poe. All right, so Poe will have that extra dice. Let's go ahead and get that dice cam up there. Here we go. Two dice. Shara's got to focus. He has a target lock for her ability or to just spend on that die. So I think right now what's being weighed is, you know, with three agility on Poe with a focus, is it worth spending the target lock? And he's decided, yes, it is. I think he was debating how to spend the target lock, but... And there you go. Spends out. No problem. Yep. So we're going to end up being back to dials here. I think maybe... Oh, sorry. Oh, Jess no, should Jess, have a shot. Jess got a shot from downtown. Thank you for everybody who's just joining in. You are watching Ooh, the XTC on GSP. Unobstructed shot into Shara. She does have an evade, though. And I'm just noticing this dice box is no longer blue. Or is that just my screen? That's just on your screen. Okay. And hit hit crit. two hits and a crit. Watch out, Shara. She's got no way to yes. add focuses here, but the evade does it. Yep. And now the question with Shara is, what does she do here? Because she has vectored cannons. She can just rotate and do like a two bank and try and go after Poe. Like two bank away. Try and catch him with the back arc. She can probably go in pretty hard at Jess and Rose if you think they're going to go fast. But if she gets turned on, she is just an A-wing. And again, she's flying away from her support ships. All righty. So Team USA this week, uh, it's, how many games have been played so far? These are the first, I think there's another game going on right now. I think I, Daniel yeah, Leon. I think Daniel started at the same time, and they're the first two games for the Spain-US. There you go. So we'll find out you know, in the next 60 minutes or so how the uh, Team USA and Spain matchup are going to be getting started here. Um, how are, how, what are your feelings as a member of Team USA going into... Uh, this week. Uh, I am contractually obligated to say we got this 7-0. But like, <laughs> on, in, a, in a realistic sense, like Spain is a juggernaut of a mm -hmm. team in the XTC. And while their lists, to at least my eye and I think some of my teammates, are a little suboptimal, like we take Shara over Hera in a Heratani list, but they're still really, really good players. So, like, we can't really judge it just based on the strengths of the list. We have to look at those players, and they made the choice to bring these lists, and they're winning. And it's kind of hard to say. We'll go ahead and clear out that dice box for y'all. Oops. All right. 
let's see here. So Shara right now probably does she have a line on Poe going to the right? Yep. She can system phase rotate the arc to the back and then two bank or two turn to the left. There you go. I mean, maybe start trying to get in uh in position to pursue Jess possibly. Yeah. Um I'm not so sure if that's what's gonna happen though. Like it might be a system phase boost left. Oh no, there's the rotate. So it looks like they're going after Poe. Yep, and there's the turn in from Benthic. Mm -hmm. This is this is what we were talking about last turn. Poe is essentially in the corner. Now we'll see how um how sneaky Carson Ray can be. Doesn't have access to a K turn or anything like that. Can't flip the uh, flip the board at this moment. Would end up having to go to the right. Yeah, but like if he two turns to the right, he can just boost out of Benthic's arc, and uh, Kyle only has the turret pointed that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks. Look at this. Jess Pava. Stepping on the gas just enough to have a good shot. Looks like unobstructed on Benthic two tubes with no return fire. Yep. And we are setting up a target lock focus for Jess using Rose's coordinate action with C-3PO. Yeah, Rose with C-3PO. Such a good spend at 30 points. And there's a target lock from Shara. Well, it looks like Shara is getting clipped by Rose. Maybe. Garvin turns as well. Remember, Garvin has the ability, after spending a focus token, to give that token to one of his friendly ships at range 1 to 3. They end up giving, uh, gaining a focus after he spends it. Does have to actually have focus results to do that, though. And Lulo getting into position to do some offense focus boost and it looks like all guns on benny yeah and it looks like lulo's also right in that pocket where he's not getting shot so we'll see what offense team usa can end up getting here but of course if the uh, if the damage output from carson is low jose is in position to possibly take out poe the most expensive ship in carson's list at 65 points true but i don't know if he's going to have more than one or two shots on poe yeah because like if he boosts barrel rolls with poe uh then he probably gets out of garvin is only taking the two die from kyle Oh, and Shara shot. But Shara doesn't have a focus, so. We'll see. All right, got to go ahead and barrel roll, get a little bit more distance. I'm going to go ahead and barrel roll side to side, right in the middle. Taking a focus, trying to do some range control, seeing if Poe can maybe have a shot here on Garvin as well. Kyle passes the focus to Benthic, uses Jan Ors to, excuse me, not Jan Ors, Jin Urso. Yep, to, wrong addition there. There you go. Uh, to change it to an evade. And here we go. We have our first shots of this round. Poe Dameron, range three into Garvin. This is going to be a two three. Ah, yes, the wings are closed. Two on two. Just a crit. And Garvin has to spend. Ends up probably passing the Shara. focus. There you go. Yeah. And there now you have the fully enabled Shara Bay ability. Now the choice to spend that on... Defense does mean that Garvin won't have that available for offense. True. And the target does seem to be Benthic. Oh, a full Ooh. blank out. Do we got heroic on that thing? No. Nope, and like that, simultaneously, 
All the voices shouted heroic. Lone wolf for one. Safe. Well, we'll have to see if Joe, uh, if Jess and Rose can together come, come together and do some damage here. But here is Jose looking to start taking a lead here. He's got a couple shots on Poe. Single crit. Well, good news is he fell victim to the curse of Garvin Dreyas and didn't roll a single focus result there. <laughs> and this is where we might see some damage. You got the vectored thrusters. Sorry, vectored cannons. Oop, and there's three hits. There it is. Shara misses consistent. Spends focus for three and... Poe pays with a single shield. Could have been significantly worse with oh, those yes. shots coming in. All right, let's go ahead and take that shield off the overlay. Thank you to Feld Kaplan for the sub. And also, there was somebody earlier. I didn't get to see the name. I'll take a look in a little bit. Uh, who did reach three years in subbing. Thank you so much. Hit Here's two crit. from Kyle and a Rose. This does have a reroll. And a calculate. It's out of it. That looked significantly worse at first. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Rose did clip Shara, who has no focus modifiers, and unobstructed into Garvin. Mm, decisions. You get... Three range, three options. Where can you end up following up shots? Is I think it's going to end up being the question. May also be try to strip the evades off Benthic for Jess's range one double mod. This is true. We'll see where it goes. It goes into Garvin. One hit. There's a Rose reroll. And only going to end up getting one there. That could be Benthic as well, but no, that was uh, uh, he that was pinged Garvin. Garvin. He pink. I didn't see that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Jess, you keep going, Garvin. Yeah. Because Jess still has her ability to soft double mod. Mm-hmm. And there's the Jess reroll. Not Ooh, able to convert. Two hits. You're gonna get them Two both damage. though. Yeah, there's the shields on Garvin. So what do you think about the trade? Shield on Poe for three on Garvin? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, right now it's worth it, but positionally, ah, I am notoriously bad at playing Resistance. <laughs> uh, and Poe being stressed, like, I just see, you know, Benthic, Kyle, and Garvin just going slowly. And mm -hmm. just angling at Poe. And without overdrive, I'm not sure he gets out. Love you too, Star Slinger. Love you too. <laughs> it is going to also, be... Like, um, Go ahead. Jess and Rose are just flying straight into the teeth of uh, Benthic and Garvin. It's so like if Garvin two turns down, Benthic pops Leia and stops, and Kyle just stops. What what do Justin Rose do? One straight to victory, baby. <laughs> I think that's your probably your best choice. I mean, but if you probably, you're... but it's gonna feel really bad. Mm hmm. I agree. I agree, but I mean, at this point, you you don't really have the room to bail. I guess you could go through the clouds. You could. Does does Jess have enough room to hard turn that way? Probably. Yeah. But yeah, like you... the pod being stressed, like Rose can't really go anywhere. Yeah. Although I think a one straight from Rose is reasonably safe anyway. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Like that. That's not too bad. It doesn't doesn't hurt you this turn. Uh, Jess is the one who's, who's definitely going to end up having some issues. I don't hate the idea of purposely bumping Jess into Benthic. 
or at least in kind of banking in that direction and saying, hey, if I bump, it's not a big deal. I got some Jess ability plus a coordinate from Rose to be able to get yeah. some tokens. That that actually sounds like a good play there. Hey, look at this. My two-hour sleep brain. Thinking about good plays. What? What? Are, what is this? Eventually, you, you cast enough X-Wing, you will see all of the plays and know which ones are good or bad. <laughs> Shout out to Tycho Kelchu 505 Thank you so much. And Shara rotates and Leia gets popped. Pop, pop. There's a stop. stop from Ben. Pop, pop. There's a stop. Pop, pop. I got I to gotta write a song. That's just the plan. All right. Giving the focus to Garvin. There's a stop from Kyle. We'll see if Carson saw it. Takes an additional focus. Remember, Leia allows the Rebel player to reduce the difficulty of red maneuvers for that turn. There are three charges on it. And there's the one straight. Okay. Well, I think what may have been the, the, the decision there saying, do I think these shifts are going to end up focusing down Jess or are they going to turn in on Poe? And Poe was not a tasty enough snack. Oh. Now, I think one of the things we'll, we'll have to see here is I, I want, I'm wondering what Carson's move is because that will tell us a lot, about, a, lot, a lot about his intention. Oh, that is Ooh, aggressive. And he fits? Garvin fit. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Jess. We hardly knew you. Poe Dameron's got to get aggressive. If we see something like a two bank to the right, you know that uh, Carson was looking to be offensive this turn. But if we see something like a three straight, that could uh, that could end up being bad news bears for sure. And mm -hmm. look at look at the kill box being made here by Jose. Yeah, this this is going hard at Jess. Although, and depending on what he presents with Lulo here, like if he just focus fails the boost. Kyle may end up shooting Lulo. So we got the stress clearing maneuver. There's a focus. And looks like we're holding on to the three agility. And Lulo is just an A-wing this turn. Oh, he's opening the wings. One bank. There okay. That was pretty safe. Pretty safe. Just target lock focus. Garvin, is that the plan? Uh, Yeah, probably. Maybe Might. go into Benthic. But I, I, I like trying to burn Garvin off the board here. All your ships have shots on either Benthic or Garvin. Rose's shot to Benthic. Is it obstructed? It does not nope. look obstructed. It's the same shot uh, Jess had last turn, which was unobstructed. So maybe maybe the plan is go into, go into Benthic? Oh, but yeah, it looks there's... like it's range 2 to Garvin from that target lock. Oh, get it. Get it. Oh, decisions. I think right there I end up going to Garvin. Yeah. You, you, it only has one focus, right? Only single focus? Well, you burn. I mean, Kyle still goes, so Kyle can give him more focuses. And but he's going into Benthic. All right. This... And you see Jose debating where to sling that focus with Kyle. Because you know what, Th this could end up being a uh, the target lock could end up being de de deceptive. Like, actually, I'm gonna go into Garvin now. Yeah. Nope. But Quick he's going on the Ben pick. All right, going into Benny. Yeah, I think he's gonna try to take his three range ones or two range ones there. Oh, Oops. that's didn't even need the lock. That's three. Spend that focus every day. Hit hit crit. And Benthic spends his focus and is fine. Although that did get rid of Benthic's offensive mod for the turn. Yep, got rid of the offensive mod. And the only defensive mod is a single damage worth of mitigation. Ooh, there we go, Lulo. Hit crit. Uh, he's deciding whether to spend the focus or not. He did not stress ah. himself, so he'll have three agility. And he would be yeah. potentially taking one shot. Is it worth it? Yeah, I, I think you keep the focus. Spends evade. It does. You know what? Did his job though. Was able yeah. to get get the 
evade uh, evade token off the board. Correct. Well, actually, Garvin still hasn't shot, so maybe Benthic gets an offensive mod. Although no, if he if Garvin spends that focus, it certainly it's going to Shara. That is a blank result. Hit focus, spend the lock. Mm -hmm. That'll be three, not four. Oh, he just grabbed Jess's focus. Oh no, it went to Benthic. Pava reroll. Here we go. And didn't come and up with anything. Two damage. Carson's got a uh, got a lot of blank to blanks going on. Takes a couple. Oh, they shot into Jess's range too. That helps. Yeah, especially because Shara doesn't have a focus. So her ability does nothing here, and it's only going to be at max two hits. Oop. Left it at one. Got the evade. And now Kyle has a choice. Does he go range one at Lulo? Nope. Keeps piling onto Jess. So Jess is down two shields. Got that right. And one Kyle hit. his last focus. Or no, he has another focus left. All right. Spend a BB charge for a Pava reroll. Got to try again. Looking for some paint and got, got it. Got it. He even she... got to keep his focus. Massive. And we'll have a shot into Benthic 2-2s two with a focus. Or could go into Garvin. Garvin. Right now he's, he's doing a little bit of, of split fire, but uh, Garvin's less defensive, obviously, with a, with uh, only one agility as well. Yeah. I think we'll see what happens when, we, when Rose picks. Because Benthic's at range one for Rose. He's going to go at the Benthic. It's identified no. Benthic as a bigger problem. Now he's looking at Garvin's health. Right. Still at Benthic. Three dice and Rose probably spends calculate Benthic here for three. Benthic. And Ooh, blank, blank out. From Benthic. That's massive. Pava now has fully modified shot because she kept her focus token. And still has a target lock on Benthic from last turn. Here's the lock on the blank. Got two focuses and a hit. Can you make it for Landbolo dropping some subs in the chat as well? Here we go. All the excitement. Yeah. And another blank to blank. And then Benthic spends the focus, only takes one. That, that feels bad. That was a lot less exciting than it could have been. I'm sure Car Carson's hey. a little disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little disappointed too. But that is half points on Benthic. Benthic. And you did get Benthic to spend his focus token. So this is only hit crit. <laughs> only hit crit. All right, could spend the last BB charge for try to dodge the crit. That's why you brought him. Yep, and he's doing it. Looking for a squiggle and Got it. does no damage and specifically no crit going under the hole for Jess Pava. And Pava stays above half. All right, let's go ahead and just double check our health here. Pava. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why Jess Pava is as expensive as she is. Is she good? Is she all right? Is she okay? Just a little bit, yeah. That's right. <laughs> So, Benthic 2 tubes has been half-pointed. There are shields off of Garvin. And shields off of Jess. All right, everything is up to date. And we are at a score of 33-0. to zero. United States X-Wing team in the lead. Team Spain right now trailing 33-0. to zero. Anyone want to place a bet with me on whether or not Garvin 4Ks? I mean, the, the space is open. It yeah. makes sense. Well, it, it's a very obvious move. Yeah. But, like, Carson can just, you know, one turn left with Lulo, focus boost, and just nuke him. 
And we'll see what those decisions are. Yeah. Now, also, just, what do you do with Rose and Jess? They, they, they are, they are in a problem. I mean, I, I feel lucky. Um, for like Carson, I think might feel lucky the fact that Jess even got to stick around this turn. Yeah. So, I mean, are you just busting that 4K as well to become a part of the fight? Are you we are we disengaging and taking a moment, maybe trying to flank Kyle? Uh, I actually don't hate the 4K from Jess because Poe's gonna be there for a reroll, so she should still have some mods. Um, I don't know. I like. Rose doesn't really have space to move before Jess to coordinate her a focus before she 4Ks. And that's my main problem with it. Is if Benthic just doesn't care about not having Leia and, or, or just does that. The interesting thing, though, is that would not actually block the 4K from um, the Jess from Jess. It would just make it so that Jess would be firing at you from the backside. Because you end up bumping into Garvin because Garvin's initiative four. Yeah. So and if Poe just does a one forward here, Benthic's going to be real sad. He also took the focus action, kept an evade for himself, and yeeted Garvin a focus. So I think Garvin's 4K'ing. Yeehaw. Oh, oh it, fit. it fit. Oh, my goodness. Well. Oh, wait. Rose might be able to coordinate Lulo, who's not stressed. Hey, that's that's rare. Very rare. Okay, are we going to get some movement shenanigans? I love movement shenanigans. Focus. Yep, just focus. Keep it simple. Yep, there's, there's the 4K, the as expected. Shara, say hello, girl. Giving a high five to Rose out the cockpit. Yep, By the way, I think Rose actually has a shot on Shara. Oh, yeah, range one. They might, might. And shout out to Lan Bolo. It was a number. I think it looks like twenty five subs got dropped there. Thank you so much, my friend. Yep. Your support and is always Lula. appreciated. Barrel roll out, boost in, maybe. Then you you got the room. He might be debating whether or not just the regular boost would do it. I think that would put his or, arc or a target past. lock boost because he wants that stress on Lula for the extra die. Yep. Got Ooh, him. nice target lock boost, and and he's out of Garvin's arc, which is which is even better. You might end up getting half points right here on Garvin. Yeah. Two damage into the one agility ship with four double modded dice. I think that's reasonably likely. All right, Jose looking to take some big swings this turn, though. He's got a nice shot at Poe at range one or at Jess, but you got two X Wings staring you down right now. Kyle Katarn, still fully healthy, will be able to use his ability here at the start of engagement to be able to pass some of these tokens around. Expect those to likely end up going on to Benthic Two Tubes. Yeah, he, he gave Benthic a focus because, you know, try to not have the U and get initiative killed. Here we go. Poe, range one, four dice. What do we get? Target lock focus. All right. Let's get, spend that target lock. He's gotten a lot of blank-to-blank -blank conversions. Might be debating not spending it. Nope, he's going to go I ahead and I think he's it. debating spending it on the focus results and keeping the focus for defense. There are a lot of arcs there's... pointed that way. He's leaning oh, in. Oh, and he got a conversion. Four hits. I think when you when you get the conversion there, you gotta spend. You got four, yeah. and it looks oh. like two and of the Benthic four doesn't will spend end up... everything here. He's taking three damage. So Benthic probably spends both, and then Jess and Rose can potentially initiative kill him. So spent the evade, waiting on the focus. He's gonna just do the evade. That's risky. I don't like that. And he's down to one. I really don't like that, but as I said before, these Spanish players are very, very good at this game. So maybe he knows something that we don't. Two hits at range one into Garvin Dreyas. Target uh, lock. Carson spent Lone Wolf. Uh, he 
he's way too close to Rose for that Lone Wolf. Ah, uh, yes, Lone Wolf. Oh, wait, it was Lone Wolf? No, he had the target lock. Ah, uh, but he flipped the Lone Wolf charge. Ah, uh, maybe... I guess you're right. Capitans. But that is half points on Garvin. And it looks like we got a single, two, excuse me, two hits coming from Garvin going into Rose. Rose. And does Rose spend that calculate or does she reroll it? She spends the calculate. Valuing that coordinator. Here's Shara. Who's the target? I go at Pava. If you can get Pava to spend a reroll on defense, which, like, hopefully Carson knows better not to do that. Spends focus for two. I mean, you, you want to use Jess to take out Benthic two tubes this turn, right? Like, that's that's what you want. So I, I think yeah, you want probably Jess to just take out Benthic, holding on to and then it. you want Rose to shoot Shara. But, like, you save, you save um, Rose for after Jess shoots. And you can see right now he's assessing whether or not it is a good decision. What does he want to do? Just take the half points, Carson. Come on. <laughs> Just take it, Carson. I'm joined in you commentary on offense. by Kenneth Lyon, one of the members of Team USA, hey. and has decided to take it. And that's why he's on the team. <laughs> Taking a calculated risk there. A damage for a better opportunity at a better shot. Kyle, range one. Oh, well, no, sorry. We got the side arc. With the turret. Again, the same thing. Is if you can get Pava to spend that charge, she has no mods into Benthic. And spending the focus on Kyle for two. Oh, decision-making time. In this case, I just don't think it's worth it to spend the charge, like, even more. Because, like, you're still taking a damage. You only have one ship to, for a reroll. And are, are you basically... You've decided that Jess is the cost of getting Benthic off the board. Yes. Because if Benthic goes off the board, Jess survives anyway. And, like, one health, two health doesn't really make a difference with Garvin. Just one forward target lock on Jess. Like, Jess probably dies next turn. Barring some ludicrous dice. And here we go. Range one into Benthic two tubes. Only needs one more damage to be taken off the board. Jess is going to have so four three dice. Hit guarantees. One reroll into no mods. And that is going to be enough. Can you make it four for fun? Maybe, actually, maybe you hold on to it. Nah, you spend it for funsies. Oh! <laughs> Oh, Brutal Savage wrecked, and all of those are going in. Fatality. <laughs> Finish him. Well, that's one way to do it. The initiative uh, kill there. Going to Fuel Leak. Fuel Leak into a panic pilot. Uh, now, the question here is, do you shoot Kyle or do you shoot Shara with Rose? Oh, Rose does have two rerolls but no focus modifier. And it looks like we're so not getting anything out of that one. And that is Benthic Two Tubes initiative killed. 92 to 27. A good start here for Team USA versus Team Spain right now in this fourth round of the XTC. If you're not familiar with the XTC, is, it is a team championship uh, tournament that is being put on. Normally it is an in-person event, but obviously because of our world's current situation, we're doing it online. We got teams uh, because it's digital, of course, it automatically makes it easier for teams all around the world to uh, to join in. So there's a team, one team per country uh, who is who is participating. We got a couple of hybrid teams out there, but it is pretty cool. Gives a uh, Olympic feel. A lot of people are, are pumped about it. There are streams across so many so many channels right now 
And, uh, yeah, we will uh, continue to book games as they become available. Remember, this is not a GSP event, so I have no control over when there are games and when there are not games. So this is our only XCC game today. And we did get a bunch of them posted to our YouTube channel yesterday. So if you aren't following us there, you can go ahead and take a peek. And we will upload them as we get them edited. As for today, we're actually going to keep it pretty short today. I know you might be a little bit disappointed knowing that. But uh, I am currently in a master's degree program. And I need every moment I can get. I've committed to making sure we got we get you guys some kind of content. We're going to hang out a little bit. I want to have a, a bit of a discussion. Do, uh, do a couple of things here via X-Wing. And, uh, and then we'll call it a night a little bit early. But, uh, of course, thank you for your support. And this weekend... Uh, this is the other reason taking taking the day to to get some stuff done. We have the Lamu Galactic Championship qualifier. That means I have ready for you about 10 to 11 rounds of X-Wing all in a row. You will get your fill of GSP this weekend. So make sure you to tune in or play or both. <laughs> this weekend the Galactic Championship qualifier So what do we think Jess is doing? And do we think Shara tries to use the system phase boost to block it? Same thing with Rose. Because I'm looking at their positions right now, how both of them are stressed. Like a, a boost right from Shara, I think blocks most moves from both Rose and uh, Jess. Oh, but it looks like Kyle's dial flipped before that happened. Oh, and Shara rotated. So Kyle's just going to go for the block. All right. Kyle just getting in the way. Though that's not a bad thing necessarily for Lulo. I'm uh, assuming for uh, for Jess. The, the one less shot coming in. Be able to, to do that. Though, of course, you have two higher initiative ships than you shooting. So... Yeah. Ah, Kyle being able to catch both of both Rose and Jess on the windscreen there. Ooh, there's Shara. That's probably a dead Pava. Yeah. Garvin coming in here as well. That's likely. It sounds like uh, from the chat, Team Malta letting us know that they have uh, defeated team sweden today you, and just for clarification you guys won a game today or you won the series today uh i believe they went 4-1 today ah okay well that that would be the the series there focus Ooh, boost. finding the side pocket on garvin put him in the pocket poe oh, also ends getting up blocked bumping. And do you try to initiative kill Garvin? Because I think both, like if Poe shoots Garvin and then Lulo yeah, shoots Garvin. For sure. Like you have two very solid shots. Or you got one solid shot with Lulo and a, you know, Poe just got to help a little bit. You got to get through four hole on a one agility ship. Yeah. Like Poe plinks him once and then Lulo punches him in the face. There you go. Oh, but he's looking at, he's looking at Kyle because he has no mods on Poe. Mm-hmm. Nope, but it's going versus... at Garvin. Oh, there's the range one. Uh, I'm not sure I like that. Got two. So got the average on Kyle. And, hey, you are going to force a focus spend at least, or probably, or give up both shields. Oh, takes both. Yeah. Kyle only has the one shield right now, so or the one focus, I mean. So he wants to keep that to hit Poe. Oh, and there's Lula going into Kyle. Interesting, just letting Garvin be. Well, he's forcing he's forcing Jose to make some tough choices for sure. Yeah. You know, he already made him pay with the first one. Hey, you're just giving me two shields for free. Because when you don't know what's on those dice, you are taking a risk every time you don't spend something. True. Two hits. And there's two hits from Lula. 
And you're going to give up another half damage. On Kyle. He kept his focus token, though. So while he did give up half points, he can make Poe really sad. And here's likely a range one from Shara into Jess. And there's a dead Pava. Rip. All right, so Pava taken off the board here. Let's go ahead and get that updated. With the disrespect direct hit at the end. <laughs> but it is worth noting, Pava is not removed from the board yet because both Garvin and Char are initiative four. So Rose has two rerolls on this shot. Oh, no, he's shooting Poe. Yep, hit, crit, With a roll crit. like that, I don't blame him. Man, Poe maybe looking a little nervous. Got, Got the natties. Nice. Woo, plinks off a shield. All right, and then this looks like Kyle lining up for his shot into Poe. Looks like they were both taking turns, locking and unlocking, locking and unlocking. And, Ooh, there's another four hits into Poe. And that's a oh, crit going under the shields, guaranteed. Guaranteed. And didn't get anything there. Poe lives, but with one. Heroic. Oh, heroic. Oh, oh, no. Double blank, double blank. Garbage card. The worst. All right, as long as it's not a double, I'm sure that's what Carson's thinking. He's pulling now, and the answer is... Fuel leak. It is a blank crit. That's that fine. is the best crit you could have pulled in that situation. I mean, a, uh, yeah, you know, like a field leak or not field leak, a whole breach wouldn't have been much better or much worse. I mean, here's Rose trying to contribute by shooting into Shara. We got a reroll. One hit and safe. safe. All right, so what is the score right now? Score right now is 117 to 87. Poe giving up half points there. Uh, definitely ends up hurting Carson just a bit and keeps Jose in the running. Yeah. Although Poe not being stressed means Rose can coordinate Poe. Mm-hmm. So we might actually see the rare Talon roll or something like that from Poe. So Jose right now got, has Garvin at five hole, Kyle at two, Shara is still full. Shara is and, and, and excuse me, words. All three of the ships left in Jose's squad have three attack dice out the front, so that every one of them is a threat. The question is, looking at the um, position, what do you think is the um, what do you think the next target is? I think the next target is whoever you can catch on Carson's list. And I, I would quibble that, you know, Shara counts as a three die gun, but she is very good. <laughs> Most of the time, a three die gun. She can make it a three die gun if she wants. How about that? Well, like in this case, Kyle can make it a three die gun if Kyle wants, but that leaves Kyle with no focus token mm -hmm. or Garvin has to get lucky. Also, I'm not sure I like Lulo's positioning here because he pretty much has to two turn to the left or two turn, like, you know, yeah, two turn to the left. And, like, Kyle can take him on that and give Shara just, you know, two turns to the right. But what if, what, if, what if, no, what if you just two forward? But two forward Lulo onto the gas cloud? Yeah. Why not? If if Kyle just goes forward and the arc is pointed somewhere else, Shara's pointed somewhere else, and Garvin just moves one straight, two straight is perfectly fine. Hang out at the crab this shack. This turn. Then, well, yeah, this turn. Problem there is he pretty much has to use Rose to coordinate him off the gas cloud the next turn. Because a two straight leaves his nubs on the gas cloud. 
And I don't know if he'd have a barrel roll off. He might, though. It's a little risky, but like it's not horrible positioning this turn. There is the Vectored Cannons switch. Kyle turning focus. Let's just see that one forward, Rose. Do it. Yes. One forward. We got coordinate options now. It might actually be worth it to just double calc rows there. Keep her unstressed. Leave the turn two turn up for next turn. The two turn on the pot is white, right? I'm remembering that correctly. Yes. Nothing too crazy. And there's double calculate. Because now the one forward from Garvin gets blocked into rows. And if Poe did do something like a Talon roll. Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. One forward fit. I'm just bad at this game. Two turn from Shara. And here we go. We got the two turn the away. Two turn so from Lulo. Keeping it safe. Keeping it safe. I, I think a barrel roll toward that asteroid and then a rotate keeps you out of Garvin's arc and unobstructs the shot. It's going to have no mods, but a free shot's a free shot. That's right. One of the problems it does connect, of course, uh, create, of course, is that uh, that Lulo would end up being a little bit farther down if he was anticipating bringing uh, bringing Lulo towards the top. That might be the the reason why he'd be slowing down, or he might not even be debating barrel rolling to the left to bring Lulo back down the following turn. But gonna go ahead and take the sh the, the shot now. Yeah. And then let's see what Poe did. That's a uh, wings closed. And a bump. Which is fine. Poe's not getting shot. You're in a safe place. Poe Dameron hugging a childhood mentor, Luulo Lampar. That's canonical. All right. Here we go. Lulo. Uh, do you go with Kyle here? Because mm. Kyle only has two health left. It sure is tempting. And There's that's what he's shooting at. Oh, that's going to be three. Nope. Doesn't have a focus. He barrel rolled. But oh, it's two. It doesn't it's matter. Two of them. Oh, my God. Go <laughs> through and Kyle. Kyle's taking off the board. Whoa. See, that advice Marcel gave us once upon a time of just roll better. I feel that. It's all in the wrist, baby. It's all in the wrist. Yeah. But now Garvin's going to try to make Rose feel the hurt. Because there's no rerolls for Rose on that shot. It's going to be three on there. Passing the focus over to Shara Bay just to make sure you get that ability going. And the dice say two damage. And like you said, half points on Rose. Though her half points, of course, only 15. 15. The, yep. The cheapest. Silly on the for board. how good a ship that is. And Rose gonna have a shot here. Ooh, hit, hit crit. crit. Looking angry, Shara Bay. What you got? She says she's fine. So I'm Shara Bay. Yeah. Do you know? I took down a Death Star. Hello. You're thirty points. I'm thirty-two points. Excuse <laughs> me, lady. <laughs> Actually, thirty-three points. 33, I have vector yeah. cannons. All right, current score 141 to 102. Carson Ray versus Jose Hongaro, Team USA versus Team Spain in our first matchup of this XTC week. There is another matchup going on right now at around the same time. It's uh, Daniel Leon versus Andy Romero. I actually am watching that on a second uh, second window. 
Uh, Andy Romero is at 40 points to Daniel's 30. And uh, although Ventress is, I think, two damage away from him. So and Zan has lost a few shields. All right, where are we going to go next? Looking at our board state here, Poe limping on one. So, yeah, oh, man, here's the thing. Like, Shara and Garvin are both dangerous pieces, and especially Shara. I know, like, by herself, it takes, you know, a couple turns to set up her, her big punch, but that's all yeah. she needs. All she needs is one turn to really make you regret it. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, that, you know, CLT Jedi Knight. It's the, I can be in bullseye one turn to get my shot. No, you can't. <laughs> and Shara is very much like that, where if you let her get away with a target lock, you just cannot be in her arc that one time. All right, there we go. We got the system phase rotate on the vectored cannons. I will say Shara Bay does seem like the one of the best platforms on the A-Wing for the vectored cannons with her ability. If yeah. you can get her focus tokens, it's good. I also kind of like Sabine with Starbird Slash, mm. but that's just me. <laughs> that's Ken the Kenneth Lyons flavor of the month there. All right. Jose, uh, after that rotation, does see Rose right now threatening, takes double calculate with C-3PO after the one straight. Yeah. Ooh, Garvin with the two turn. And it fits. That means that back arc will be able to shoot Rose. Now, Shara currently doesn't have any shots. She could boost. There it is, boosting to the left. In that classic A-Wing style. Yep. And then, depending on which way Lula went... Uh, I think I just focus straight boost with Lulo. I get the obstruction. Try to just hide. I mean, if Poe goes down, Lulo is the one who's going to have to do the heavy lifting on offense. I mean, have you seen any of Carson's games before? Lulo <laughs> does the heavy lifting. <laughs> it's, this is true. Although, this Lulo is still at full health, so he's not quite super powered up with the one whole Lulo. And after this game is done, we are going to be doing a couple of giveaways before we sign off for the night. Again, we're ending a little bit early today because we got 10 to 11 games of X-Wing coming your way this weekend. Boosting into oh. the corner. Okay. Ooh. That is that's aggressive for sure. Deciding to want to get aggressive this turn, to get a little bit offensive, and oh, Talon roll from Poe, gonna go all the way forward. Might end up being out of Garvin's arc with that move. Yeah, and because of the way Poe's canted, I I think he can still get a shot without giving up one. I think so too. Now he remember, on the Talon roll, he can check all three locations. Carson going to be making that decision here. Let's see. Does he uh, have Garvin's it? Garvin's got that shot. Gar Garvin does have the shot? Yeah. I think so. Well, maybe. I'm zoomed out. Uh, let me zoom in. Who actually? Actually, hold up. Here we go. We'll switch to the Patreon Ooh, cam that. here so you guys can see, see what's going on here. It's two hits on the roll. Garvin rolls a single focus. And going to spend it. Takes one damage on Garvin. Yep, and now Shara has mods for her shot in the rose. Garvin down to three. Lulo does have Lone Wolf active. So this can be double modified if Carson wants it. One hit. It's a Lone Wolf charge. Spence. Got a crit. Hit crit. That can matter. The hole is exposed. It is through a rock, though. And the Natty oh. show up for Team Spain. Yeah. 
Here we Which go. Range two. Shara trying to clean up Rose. Rose has two health left. Only one Not hit. Not gonna happen. Rose. And there's some natties of Rose. Not today, Rose. she says. Back arc, range one. Garvin could finish it. You'll have three dice because of range one. Yep. And gives Rose no rerolls. Two hits. All right, two hits, maybe. And if it's a full blank out, which is not two calculates, Rose is fine. It's double calculates for the win there. Remember, the second calculate, or the calculates coming from the C-3PO crew that is on Rose Tico in the resistance. Four minutes left. Looks like this might be the last turn. Only got four minutes to save the world. Old song, but... It applies. Here we go. 141 to 102. All right. I think Poe should just two turn to the left and react to what Garvin does. Like Shara's flying away. Just ignore her. Can't coordinate with Rose, so just keep her safe. Yeah, and if Garvin goes down here, that's like just the nail in the coffin. Mm-hmm. Because th th that would be more than enough points to, to hold you up through the rest of the time. Yeah. Now, remember, our stream clock is an approximation. They actually have a couple seconds less than what we have here. Yeah, as of right now, they have three minutes and ten seconds. Yep. So about five seconds ahead in the future than us. No, it's caused some in issues. in the future from the chat. This is true. It's There's a delay on the delay. <laughs> Inception. And after we, uh, after we finish our game and do our giveaways, we are, we're going to do a, a, a raid on the other team USA game going on right now versus Spain. They still got about 25 minutes left in that game. And they'll, they'll be at a still about 20 before we go. So we'll go ahead, give them hi, shout out the channel there, let them know that GSP says hi, and uh, we will sign off for the night. Two turn. Shara trying to get into position. Lulo to turning towards a corner. Will the barrel roll make it so that Lulo has a shot? Going to try. You go as far forward as possible. Uh, maybe. But I, I don't, I'm not it's convinced. It's going to be close. Neither am I. And if you want to get the stress, there's absolutely no way. Unless you fail boost off the board. But that would be a little risky there. Oh, nope. Went for the rotate. So no shot at all. All right, go gonna wait for Maybe another day. Maybe trying to bait the shot. Mm-hmm. Well, well, this is this is massive here. You end up avoiding a shot from Garvin, though you don't have any sh any uh, any mods. Oh no, oh, you do have a shot. That means Shara can shoot Poe. Oh no. Oh, there we go. There's some natties. Sorry, I'm not biased at all. That, that three hits from Poe. Three hits from Poe and... Two evades from Shara. It's a shield. No shield. points. No half points, though. You would have needed those half points to feel really good about this. If Poe goes down, he's going to end up giving up 33 points. But that wouldn't be enough to catch him. Yep, and now Shara has mods in the Poe from Garvin. There's a shield on Lulo. Plinking away. But that, that single shield on Poe, uh, if, if Lulo would have lost half points there, 
Carson would have lost this game, assuming that Poe goes down. Yeah. All right, but Poe survives. Poe survives. There's three seconds on the clock. One, zero. Uh, there's a dial set from Team Spain, so it looks like we're getting another turn. All righty. Little, little quick set action there. And this is going to end up being the final turn. Right now, Carson up 141 to 102. Poe takes no damage. Now, for any of our newer players on the competitive scene, you might be wondering, well, the clock's at zero. What's going on right now? So, um, because... GSP events online work a little bit different, but because these are freestanding and you don't have to... We're not, we don't have a bunch of people playing at the same time. Uh, this is being played how a normal in-person tournament would go. Is the planning phase counts as the next turn in a quote-unquote normal situation. So Jose had the dial set at the one-second mark after they were done. So what does that mean? That means that the... System phase had started. That is the beginning of the new turn. And per the rules, it says once you've started a turn, which does include the planning phase in normal cases, um, you have to complete that turn. So in competitive play, you'll see it all the time. Somebody will take a dial and they'll they'll have it set ASAP. We've even seen really um, – we've even seen it so that people – during, let's say, the engagement phase, they know they're close on time, they will go ahead and set their dial early. Now, there's some arguments maybe to be had there about like, well, what if the people have abilities to do with the dial, X, Y, Z, you got to be able to reference. True, true. That's not the debate we're trying to have right now, but I'm just letting you know, you know, some of the, some of the history there, it is uh, it is known. I'm sure Karsh is not surprised when, uh, when yeah. he sees that dial down. Game ends in the end phase. Once you pass the end phase, you get another turn. Mm -hmm. And as of right now, a quick update on the other game. We have Team Spain ahead 60 to 30 right now. Having taken down, it looks like, quite a few of those vultures. Three Six. vultures and three shields on Zam. One of the vultures has also taken a damage. And it looks like minimal damage on Andy's list. This one seems to be leaning uh, a little bit towards Team Spain. Of course, we'll keep our eye on that one. Yeah, I mean, Zam can pull it back by herself, but, like... Those vultures, you need to lose them for a good chunk of that, that mm -hmm. scum list. It looks like Carson's hesitating over Poe's dial. Still hasn't set it yet. I mean, you're not and too worried the, about Gar... Like, Garbage has what? You hard turn outside to try to get that arc pointed towards the center of the board, or you just one forward or... You one forward to bump and keep your arc pointed down. Yeah. Like, I... Carson, what? He can't lose half of Lulo and the other, the rest of Poe, right? Right, exactly. So you just have to be careful with, with two out of the four. Two out of the four need to be... Uh, sorry, two out of the three. Two out of the three need to be safe, and you win the game if you're Carson. Yeah. But Jose knows that too. So we need to see what what goes on here Carson might be tempted to do something like a something involving a, a coordinate from Rose if you can get her close enough though that could potentially put Rose in danger no nope, but not going to do it going towards the bottom right hand corner taking double calculates holding down for dear yeah, life with, with Poe's wings open there wasn't much a coordinate can do other than give Poe mods Yeah, and I think if Poe just does like a two turn to the right and bumps into Garvin mm -hmm. and just doesn't move, or two turn to the left, I mean, just doesn't move, like he's golden. Yep. 
And we did see Shara Bay take a turn to the right, debating on actions now. Currently has a focus. Lulo going to the right. I, I think Lulo just takes a focus. Like, I don't think there's any reason to be risky. Yep. Take a focus. He might even be tempted to barrel roll to the left. Just get a little extra range. But if Garvin bumps there, you might end up... Uh, yeah, Gar Garvin's already moved. Oh, Garvin did 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 uh, complete the bump? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> yep, just slap down the focus and leave it, leave it be. All right, Poe, what you got for us? Maybe a three turn to the right. Just YOLO the gas cloud. Try to not get shot. Poe opens the wings. Oh. I don't like that. Uh, I really don't like that. That. Yeah. That is a tough move. I, th I think you just focus barrel roll. Give Shara the range one. Yeah. And let Garvin take the bad shot into the other two ships. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. No, but you can't, uh, did he? He did close the wings. He closed them. Okay. Yes. So yeah, that that's the call. You go as far back as possible, so that Garvin just take the focus. doesn't shoot. Actually, it might be worth. No, no, you you take the modifier. Coming down to the wire here, Jose still has a win condition. Take out Poe and Garvin does uh, takes out either Rose or Lulo or half a Lulo, nope. and that'll do it. Oh, I don't like that. Although I let's see, I think he's still out of Garvin's arc, so we'll see. And it begins here. Lulo Lampar, range three in the Shara. Take two Hits. hits. If you can get the half on Shara, you would lock up the game. Not going to get uh, it. Two evades. All right, Shara. Two dice. Currently does no not No target lock out there for Shara. It, exactly. No target locks. One hit. All right. All right, Poe. Let's see an evade. There it is. That, there we go. That's that the game. clinches the game. Garvin shot. Because uh, the math is irrelevant. Carson will have scored 141. We'll see how many points Jose can end up scooping up at the end. MOV does matter for, I believe it is the, the second level. It's the third tiebreaker. The third uh, so tiebreaker. MOV actually really doesn't matter. It, it only matters in the case of a three-way tie where all three of those teams beat one or the other. All right, and right there, confirmed, Carson Ray wins the game from Team USA, 141 to 102. Thank you both players for playing. Thank you to Team Spain and Team USA. This has been a GSP broadcast, broadcasting the XTC. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, and Row 6 our Grand Admiral patrons, and all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members. Thank you so much for your support. Gold Squadron out.